Hello everyone, welcome to Sega Talk where we talk about everything Dreamcast. Today we're going to be talking about the Dreamcast turning 17 years and we're going to recommend six games that define the Dreamcast for me and Barry who's here with me. Hey, what's up everyone? What game will you recommend to our listening audience on the Sega Dreamcast? Let's see, well the first pick is Jet Set Radio. And the reason I picked this is to me Jet Set Radio is the Sonic or Knights of the Dreamcast. And I mean that in the sense that I feel like this is kind of a console defining game for me. It's it's just like with Sonic or Knights in the Dreams. It was new, it was different. It really caught people's attention and it's a, you know, it's a it's another kind of spin on the action platformer. It's just, it's such a timeless game. I know it does have some control and camera issues that granted were better in the HD release, but I can't really play that and feel the same nostalgia that I can feel when I played on the original Dreamcast. And it's just, it's so much fun making your uh, graffiti art and you can even hook up the, um, the Dream Eye camera if you pick that up and take pictures and then put it all over Tokyo. Uh, it's, Graphically, musically, just one of my favorite games, uh, not only on the Dreamcast, but of all time. And I'm going to pick for my first game to recommend to you people, Sonic Adventure, because it's one of the launch games for the Sega Dreamcast, and it was like, the Sega Saturn never had a Sonic game, so this is like the first full-blown Sonic Team 3D game, and I think it's worth checking out, and it was, it released 17 years ago as a launch title on the in the North America for the Sega Dreamcast. It has some pretty good levels. I, I feel like this one's better to play through Sonic Adventure 2. And I, I've, I've been I've, I've been over this uh, a couple times through other videos, but it's because you can just play as Sonic if you want to, and that's great because I don't want to play as other characters. I just want to play as Sonic, and this is pretty cool because it allows you to do that. And it's totally worth checking out, and it's cheap to buy. Oh, for sure. And if I just I wanted to add to Chow Adventure, is something that I know a lot of Sonic fans, new Sonic fans, grew up with the GameCube, but you can't play Chow Adventure on the GameCube. It's only on the Dreamcast, so there's an exclusive uh, element to the game right there. Oh, yeah. What's your next game? All right, well, my next pick is a little indie title, had a very small budget. No one's ever heard of it. It's called Shenmue, and uh, oh. no, it's a, <laughs> it costs a <laughs> lot of money. A lot of people worked on it, and um, yeah didn't really make its money back but having said that i think it is one of the most ambitious games of the era it you know what 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 can i say about it you know ryo hazuki uh the story of revenge you're you're in a very interesting era of japan that i don't think a lot of um video games explore which is 1980s japan it's not even you're not not even in like Tokyo or something big. It's just a small little town and you get to know the characters in the town. You get to do menial tasks and you know, you have to go home on time. It's it's such a big epic story, but at the same time it's sold told in such a small setting that I think really works well. The sequel I'd also recommend, however, I feel like a lot of things that I loved about the first Shenmue didn't transition over to Shenmue 2. That one felt much more like a big epic action movie, which is still great, but there's just something really kind of quiet and comforting about the original Shenmue. And I think that's my favorite part about that game is just that everything went so slow because like life is kind of like that. It's repetitive and that's kind of what they try to show. And then when you go to China, everything's just so fast. Like city life is so fast compared to little town life. That's what they're trying to convey, I think. Power Stone, which is another launch title, oddly enough. I just feel like the Dreamcast probably had a really had like one of the best launch title lineups of all time. They had Power Stone, Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur, so like Power Stone is definitely worth checking out. I for some reason I prefer the first one compared to the second one. Because I think like the second one is just so big and crazy. But they're both fantastic. They're both worth checking out. And outside of having a PSP port, uh, they're exclusive to the Dreamcast. I mean, outside the PSP. But I feel like the best way to play them is on a big TV with your friends. So, yeah. I totally suggest checking these out if you get a Dreamcast. Well, let's see. My next pick and my, uh, my final pick of my three to play is... Um... I, I waffled, I was trying to think of a game that used an accessory, 
And I think the ultimate accessory is the maracas. And so I'm picking Samba de Amigo from Sonic Team. And that game, I mean, you, you need the maracas to fully experience it. They went for about, what was it, about 150 at the time, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, and you might say, God, that's a lot of money. But you know what? On the, uh, the secondhand market right now, they still sell for 150. So really, they haven't shot up that much. If you're lucky, you might, you know, show up at a retro game shop and they might have one sitting in the back. I've, in the past five years, I've probably seen about, you know, five or six of them in the wild, uh, which I, I think is a pretty good number. Um, but, you know, you get a Dreamcast for $30, $50, you get Samba de Amigo Maracas, and you're set. You have an arcade experience at home. I think the music's great. The Maracas are very responsive, unlike the Wii version. And it's just, it's a really fun, addicting game. It gets harder and harder. You know, there's all these uh, difficulty levels, all these multiplayer modes. I personally recommend importing Samba de Amigo version 2000. It's very import friendly. It has a lot more songs, a lot more modes. And I feel like it's a little more finely tuned. So that's that's my pick. And I know it's an expensive pick, but if you want a really fun arcade experience at home, I recommend it. I mean, Skies of Arcadia, that's a good game. That's a good JRPG. It's one of the few Japanese RPGs that Sega ever did. It has good characters. It has really fantastic graphics for Dreamcast. It was ported to the GameCube as Legends, but a lot of people say that the Skies of Arcadia on Dreamcast has better audio, but the GameCube one has more uh, has more content. But I don't know. I mean, I've only played it on the Dreamcast all the way through, and I totally, totally recommend it. I mean, a little thing, little things have aged. Like I think there's a lot of like battles, and it gets kind of annoying after a while. But outside of that, it's a fantastic game with good characters, good graphics, good music, uh, decent writing, uh, and I just like the theme. I just like the idea of being a sky pirate and going around and exploring. Yeah, it also is notable for having another VMU game uh, in uh, in it. Oh yes, it has a VMU game. I've never played the VMU game on this. What is it? It's It's a little side story with one of the NPC characters and it allows you to earn items. So I, I believe he goes on little adventures and comes back and then he gives the items to your uh, main game characters. <laughs> and also it's worth noting that Skies of Arcadia on the Dreamcast has a special um, inadvertent little uh, <laughs> assistant, which is the disc making a bunch of noise whenever a random battle is about to occur. Yeah, that, yeah, I remember, I remember that. Like I remember being in summer, like playing the game and I would be like playing, you know, laying down on the couch. And then every single time that the little disc started, uh, you could hear it screeching because you had to oil your Dreamcast, they said online. Uh, I would just press pause and start healing all my guys. Cause like you, you got a warning before the fight. It was, I liked it. I just kept it like that because it gave me an advantage in the game. So, so, yeah, so I think that's definitely a, a great uh, cross section right there. We've got some RPGs, some fighters, some uh, action adventure games and a bizarre uh, arcade title. George, do you have any maybe advice for people who want to pick up a Dreamcast? Where should they look? What should they expect to, uh, to spend on the secondary market? I would say look at uh, Craigslist first. And uh, I've usually seen them for about 50 bucks with bundled. Like I've seen people bundle their things with games, 50 bucks. And that's totally worth the price. Right now, I think the Dreamcast is not that expensive compared to the Sega Saturn and the Super Nintendo or any of the other retro consoles because it's at a certain point where it's not really retro but it's not really modern so it's at limbo there's people trying to get rid of it i think in like five years it's gonna rise up in price so get that console i say go get it it's worth every penny yeah and with the 20th anniversary in uh, just three years i feel like that's when it's really gonna start to pick up yeah, some games are expensive, but uh, thankfully it's pirate friendly, so you'll be able to experience any game you want with the power of the internet and a CD burner. <laughs> Let us know what games you recommend for the Sega Dreamcast. We told you six of ours, tell us six of yours. 